Hi guys. Today I want to answer a few questions I received on my pyramid theory. In previous videos, I proposed that the stone Egyptian pyramids were not the work of dynastic Egyptians, but remnants of a lost, highly advanced civilization. The tool marks are the subterranean chamber of the Great Pyramid, the multiple underground shafts, and some megaliths near the Giza pyramids are all very similar. They resemble modern mining machine marks. Were they all parts of an ancient mining system? If so, what kind of role could the pyramids have played in this mining operation? All the Egyptian pyramids are almost completely solid structures built with millions of tons of blocks, such as the two smaller gray pyramids on the Giza Plateau, the Khafre and the Mankori. The Great Pyramid has the most elaborate interior design, but its opening is only 0.014% of its entire volume. It's like a glass of water in a pool. From a construction point of view, it makes zero sense to use so much building material to construct these enormous solid pyramids with so little usable interior space. Unless the goal was to pack as much material together as possible. These reasons lead to my theory that if the Giza shafts were excavated for mining, then the pyramids might be carefully designed and executed, cemented mine tailing, and waste rock storage piles. Please don't underestimate the importance of mine waste storage. Just because they are piles of waste doesn't mean they were not created with great accuracy. Through history, failed waste piles, slag heaps, and spoil tips have caused devastating disasters. If we don't want to see this happen again, then we need to understand the paramount importance of effectively planning, designing, and building mine waste storage sites. Today's mine waste storage sites are usually designed to permanently store potentially harmful materials. Thus, extra care and consideration must be included in their design. Various simulations are utilized to compute data to study the sustainability of mine waste piles, so they might be able to have service lives as long as a few hundreds of years without causing major environmental and public health problems. This is not an easy task. By comparison, most of our modern constructions can last 40 to 60 years. Sometimes longer, the 100-year service life typically applies only to main structural components of a bridge. Who can say something will last a hundred years? Architects or engineers can't guarantee that, only based on calculations or simulations. To be sure, you would have to wait a hundred years to check. That's why there are no consensus-based standards of long-term infrastructure performance. In today's construction industry, now mine waste storage sites need to have an even longer service life than infrastructures, and they don't get the same level of maintenance. Plus, we have just started to realize that mine wastes need to be treated and stored away only a few decades ago. Before that, dumping waste in rivers and lakes was the norm. Our understanding on how to deal with mine waste is quite elementary. Maybe that's why we can't visualize how the super impressive and seemingly timeless pyramids can be related to something so unglamorous as mining waste. Because of our limited knowledge on mine waste treatment and storage, we're facing the great challenge of waste pollution and acid mine drainage. When the water and the air seep through the mine waste, and when sulfate minerals in mine waste are exposed to oxidizing conditions, this process produces sulfuric acid and causes acid mine drainage. Acid mine drainage is a global crisis with long-term detrimental effects to our groundwater and the environment. Researchers have done many studies on how to reduce acid drainage and mitigate its negative environmental impact. Cemented mine waste is a new concept with very promising potential, since this method can solidify mine waste into concrete or geopolymer, 
thus minimizing the chances of mine waste being in direct contact with water and oxygen. Hence, it forms much less acid mine drainage. Multiple scientific papers have provided results of material studies on pyramid blocks and casing stones being man-made concrete. So it's conceivable that the pyramids might be built with cemented mine waste blocks and finessed with a protective layer of dense casing stones to limit the amount of oxygen and water getting inside the pyramids. Thus, you would have generated relatively small amounts of acid mine drainage. Regarding the various interior systems of the Egyptian pyramids, I propose that these systems might be seepage water drainage and treatment systems to maintain structural stability and to minimize and neutralize acid mine drainage. Since the first modern investigation, effluents and salt deposits inside chambers have been seen and reported, which means there has been long-term ongoing moisture accumulation. This intrinsic feature. Might indicate that these chambers were designed to collect moisture and water. The air shafts might act as perforated concrete drainage channels, which collect and direct water towards chambers. The interior chambers might work as drainage galleries. The underground chambers might be either anoxic limestone drains or a successive alkalinity producing system, which is also called a vertical flow system, with multiple treatment rooms on different levels. Because this drainage system would collect and move seepage water in designated channels, fewer pyramid blocks would be exposed to seepage, and therefore wouldn't generate acid mine drainage, which is dangerous to the living environment. I'm putting a list of my previous pyramid videos in the description section if you want to check out how my theory has developed. Now, let's start with the questions I received from my last video. I decide to address four questions among the many, because these have been asked repeatedly. One: If the pyramid interiors were to treat acid mine drainage, are there signs of this inside the pyramids? I think there might be evidence of acid mine drainage inside the Great Pyramid, but we didn't look for or recognize it. Now I'm going to show you photos of the Great Pyramid's interior. Please pay close attention to the orange colors, since they could be signs of iron oxide and acid drainage. I didn't color touch any of these photos. Here are some shots of the Grand Gallery entry before it got covered up. There appears to be water or acid drainage erosion. The walls of the Grand Gallery also show orange-colored drainage stains. There are some dark spots on the high ceiling of the Grand Gallery. Some have said these could be explosion or scorch marks, but these spotted marks indicate close-range small explosions or scorching, and it's hard to explain why small explosions and torches were deployed all the way up to the top of the gallery, which is over eight meters or twenty-six feet tall. Is it possible that these marks are actually drainage stains, like the ones we see in some unfortunate water leaking situations? Just a thought. On the ceiling of the relieving chamber, we can see graffiti written on top of orange stains, which means the stains existed before the graffiti. The air shafts in the king's chamber seem to have water erosion marks, and the interior looks darkened, which could be signs of acid drainage. The stone surfaces in the queen's chamber look rough with dark patches, and might have been eroded. Some photos taken from inside of the air shafts show that the shafts' bottoms are darker than the walls. Were these damages caused by passing time, man-made wear and tear, or acid erosion? Hard to say. The interior spaces are periodically cleaned, so traces of iron oxide might be removed occasionally. Furthermore. Certain areas in the passages also show a slight orange color. In the subterranean chamber, we can see some orange or reddish residues on walls and rock channels. In this photo, the color contrast between the gray ceiling and the reddish rock channels is visible. I think these might be signs of acid mine drainage. Two. Now that the casing stones are mostly gone. If the pyramids were really mine waste storage, without this protective layer, 
Why don't we see acid drainage on site? Let's see some exterior photos of pyramids. On the Giza Plateau, many exposed pyramid blocks have slight orangey color that look like drainage stains. These stains are darker than regular limestone. We can also see the darker stains on other pyramids, such as the Bent. Were they caused by acid mine drainage? I'm not sure, but it could be a distinct possibility. If pyramid core stones were cemented mine waste blocks, being exposed to the elements, they would eventually break down. The sulfide minerals, which were previously bounded to the concrete blocks, would degrade and react with the environment. Thus, there should have formed acid mine drainage on block surfaces. The Red Pyramid got its name from the warm hues of the iron-rich limestone blocks. Though under similar sunlight, the Red Pyramid doesn't seem redder than the Giza Pyramids, right? In a prior video, I cited a research paper which contains a material analysis of Giza Pyramids. According to this paper, the core stones of the three Great Pyramids all have iron oxide. Therefore, the Giza Pyramid blocks would have generated some acid drainage on the surface when exposed to oxygen and water, like what we see on the pyramids. Of course, this is my conjecture, and scientific investigations on this subject are needed. 3. How can air shafts be drainage channels if they are not watertight? Also, the shafts in the Queen's Chamber have doors. Wouldn't that block the drainage flow? Certain drainage channels actually don't need to be watertight. They are designed to be perforated, and that's how they collect water. A perforated pipe or channel allows water to seep from the surroundings into the pipe through small holes or slots along the pipe. This kind of pipe can make a great underground drainage system since it absorbs excess water and drains it out of the way. Here are a few perforated drainage channels and pipes. A French drain sits at a ground level and covered with gravel. A curtain drain is an underground trench, and it usually begins about two feet below ground level. In concrete gravity dams, their internal drainage systems consist of a series of vertical or vertically inclined wells or boreholes of porous concrete pipes that facilitate draining water away. I think the air shafts in the Great Pyramid might have acted as perforated drainage channels, kind of similar to the porous concrete drain. Now, about the doors inside the air shafts. The air shafts from the King's Chamber were found to be exit to the outside of the pyramid, and it's possible that they used to be covered with casing stones. The Queen's Chamber air shafts do not lead to the outside and both have doors about 200 feet or 61 meter into the shafts, which means they are unobstructed for 200 feet to allow seepage water to drain into the chamber. I did a rough measurement to show how far 200 feet is into the air shafts, and it turns out that the shafts end fairly close to the exterior layer. The so-called doors may not open to anything, and are just the beginning of the drainage channels. This matches the fact that the shafts are empty and there is nothing behind the doors but a rough looking block a short distance away. I know some may ask, if they're not real doors, then why do they have handles? Here is what I think. The mysterious copper handles at the ending slabs of the air shafts might work like today's concrete pipe caps or plugs which could also have handles. Don't they look similar? These air shafts might have served utilitarian purposes by functioning as drain pipes. By the way, in the use of perforated pipes, holes can be placed either face up or face down depending on the design preference. 4. Are there other ancient sites with mine waste storage like the pyramids? Megalithic sites are all over the world. Why would this practice only have been seen in Egypt? I think there might be other mine waste pyramids around the world. For example, the Bosnian pyramids might belong to this category. They are really large pyramids with complex underground tunnel systems. According to excavators, 
Some man-made stone walls were underneath the Neolithic and Roman culture layers, which means the tunnels are potentially older than Neolithic time. Also, some tunnels were backfilled. This is common practice in underground mining operations. That could be another subject to research in the future. Okay. In summary, I believe there appears to be signs of acid mine drainage inside and outside the pyramids. Therefore, my theory of the pyramids being mine waste storage sites with their interior structures acting as seepage water and acid drainage treatment systems could be a real possibility and worth serious consideration. Of course, there are more questions to be answered. One such question is why the giant gray pyramid. Only has four air shafts as drainage channels. These shafts are merely nine inches or 23 centimeters square. Weren't they too small to act as the drainage channels in the massive pyramid? This question is directly related to when and in what kind of climate the pyramids were built. Today's structures are usually built to be suitable for their local climates, and the construction of the pyramids was likely no different. Were the pyramids created during the Green Sahara period, which ended 5,000 years ago, or a dry time similar to today? I'll discuss my findings on this subject in my next video. If you have any insights, please leave me a comment. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to hit bell button so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support me, my Patreon link is below. I have a wide range of topics that I want to share with you. This is Curious Being. I'm Tina. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.